So I think the question that we really confront now is are we on the threshold of a new Cold War? Because this rivalry between two now roughly the same size economies, which is also ideological because, let's face it, all hopes that the Chinese were going to liberalise politically have been dashed. That seems to me to be the really interesting, the really interesting question for 2019, and it's a very troubling question for Australia. And on that question, Marcus has a question. Uh, Marcus, on that issue? Uh, thank you very much, guys, for coming tonight. Um, so in recent times, Australia has assumed that America will defend our interests in the event of national conflict and has only spent modestly on defence. It now appears that this American defence capability and even willingness to help us may be severely reduced, and at the same time, China's military might appears to be growing rapidly. Greg Sheridan has said that there is a national defect in our character and we should be taking defence much more seriously. Should Australia be taking more responsibility for protecting our own freedom? Yes. It's a great question. When one assesses China's defence spending, maybe defence is the wrong word. There's a very rapid uh, growth in China's offensive capability. China is, for example, building up a missile capability that would pose a profound threat to US aircraft carrier groups in the event of a conflict. Uh, you're all familiar, and I hardly need to repeat it, with China's uh, construction of military facilities uh, uh, in the South China Sea. But there's a whole bunch of less visible stuff going on as China uh, invests in what in effect is a new generation of military capability. The drone swarm is going to be an important part of any future conflict. And China has a, a natural edge given its capacity for building drones. So number one, there's no question that China's spending a lot on its military. And to call it defense is to stretch the meaning of that term. Secondly, one characteristic feature of America first as a policy is that President Trump has not exactly been reassuring to uh, traditional US allies and the alliance system. It was a great source of concern uh, for both General McMaster, his former national security advisor, and General Mattis, his former defense secretary. They've gone. Uh, and I think one has to worry a little bit about how uh, firm the resolve of the United States would be towards any of its allies uh, in the face uh, of a conflict. So when you put those two things together, Australia can hardly be complacent about its security. Look, let's just do some basic history here. History is mostly the history of empires. It's not actually the history of nation states. And it's mostly the history of conflict, not the history of peace. You get peaceful periods, no question, we've been in a relatively peaceful time uh, since the end of the Cold War. But to assume that this will continue indefinitely would be to ignore the lessons of history. Another obvious lesson of history, which has been true throughout the centuries, is that if you want peace, prepare for war. And vice versa. If you want war, act like it'll never come. Allow your defense capability to atrophy. For an enormous island that is thinly populated in relative terms compared with Asia, that has a vast store of natural resources for such an island to be ill defended seems like the most spectacular historical folly. In particular, when it is in relatively close proximity to a one-party state with obviously imperial ambitions. And it's quite a long way away from its principal ally. That China has imperial ambitions is obvious. The more Chinese leaders in their speeches say, 
oh, China never does conquest. The more I'm like, seriously? <laughs> you really gonna make that argument? I mean, the Qing Empire was taking great chunks of Russia just over a century ago. So let's get real here. This is not a good situation. It was okay during the Chimerican era when the Chinese were like, okay, it's no problem. We'll just sell you stuff cheaply and underpay our workers and lend you money. It's cool. We'll buy Australian stuff, not a problem. Market price, how much do you want? That was all fine. But anybody who thought that that was going to last indefinitely was dreaming because the whole point of Chimerica was that it was a temporary, illusory relationship and that at some point China wouldn't need it anymore. And the Chinese are kind of getting to the point where they don't need it anymore. And the bets that we placed from the Clinton era that they would liberalize or that the internet would somehow turn them into a democracy, all that's gone. China's actually gone in the opposite direction politically. Xi Jinping has increased the central control of the party, is reimposing doctrinal orthodoxy, is cutting out such free speech as had developed uh, in China's public square. I mean, how many more flashing red lights do you need? So I think this is kind of getting to the point of urgent. And what I see in Australian politics is a debate that if it was going on in a regional council in Scotland would seem parochial. The parochialism is stunning. True, a considerable effort's been made by the intelligence and national security community in this country to waken people up to the potential threat that Australia faces. But is, is Australia in any way prepared from a naval point of view for a Chinese act of aggression? No way. So I think this is a moment of truth, actually. I said yesterday that we were entering a new Cold War and we should stop pretending otherwise. That's right. And this Cold War will be very different from the last Cold War. It will be fought in different ways. It will be a, an arms race for everything from artificial intelligence to quantum computing more than for nuclear weapons or rockets to the moon. And the battlefields will be different. When you consider what China's Belt and Road Initiative has become, it is nothing less than Weltpolitik, than a global policy. It's far extended beyond the original concept that was essentially a Central Asian Indian Ocean concept, and it's become global. And the search for commodities is not a trivial part of what is involved. Empires at some level, are about acquiring commodities at below market prices. That's kind of what empires are. Or at least not trusting to the market to deliver you the commodities, so it's better to own the real estate and own the mines, control the supply chain, and not be at the mercy of the market or the mercy of a navy, which China currently is, the US Navy. So we need to clearly understand the historical logic of China's expansion. To have security, China cannot be dependent on imported commodities and market prices. When you think about what that implies for Australia, it's really quite scary. Because Australia is a prize. Australia is a hugely attractive place from a Chinese vantage point and not just as a vacation destination or a place to study and learn English. And I'm stunned by the lack of awareness of the strategic vulnerability of Australia. When everything should be screaming to you, prepare. I think we'd all agree that's extremely sobering. It's worth noting that Australia only became a nation in 1901 the federal government of that time read what was happening in Europe better, I think, than the Europeans did, realised trouble was coming. And in 1907, just six years after we became a nation, they ordered what, was, what could be described as a tier two navy from the Brits. It arrived here just five years later. By way of contrast, in 2009, it was decided 
and generally agreed as a matter of national urgency we needed 12 new state-of-the-art submarines. By the time the first one is delivered, it'll be 25 years from that decision at the earliest. That is the length of time that, eclipsed, that elapsed between the beginning of the First World War and the end of the Second World War. Thank you. I have to say to you, I believe that's a very, very timely warning to us all. Thank you for watching this episode. We appreciate your support. If you value vital conversations like this one, be sure to subscribe to the channel there and also click the notification bell to stay up to date with new releases.